Welcome to the CSI Monitoring Academy and thank you for watching this video. My name is Mark Leftwich and I am the Level 2 Team Lead for Monitoring. After watching this video you will know how to create a custom query, you will know how to define and add your own SQL to that query and finally you'll know how to define a tech workspace so you can see that query's results. The first thing we need to do is log into the TEPS so I'm going to open up the MTEMS, the traffic light window and just check the TEMS is running, the TEPS is running and also start the desktop portal client. Okay, I'm going to quickly log in. This is just a test box, so it hasn't got any authentication on it, so there's no need for a password. First thing we need to do is go to the query editor. It's the little white box with the blue database symbol at the top there. If I hover, you can see it. Once it's open, you need to create a brand new query. So at the very top left, click on Create Query. Now, name this query something you'll remember. You're going to have to find this in about three, four minutes' time. So I'm going to call this Thames SQL live situations. The SQL I'm going to be using today is going to be pulling back all the live status from the situations table in the Thames. Description if you need one, put that in. Next thing you need to do is pick the category. It's important you pick the correct category here as the query will appear under that in the tree. If you look just behind the box on the left you can see all the different components listed whatever option you select here it will put it under that option on the left hand side so we're going to select Tivoli Enterprise Monitoring Server next step you need to know the source of where your data is coming from so in this case we know it's coming from the Thames database so you always need to have type Thames selected that next column that says name hub underscore best the host name of this box is best so that is the Thames name and then description is obviously the same here next part at the bottom you can see custom SQL the little tick box if you check that box, it will allow you to put your own SQL in in the next stage. If you don't, then you'll hit attribute group stages and you'll have to pick which attributes you want to pull back. So now we're in the custom SQL stage. At the top, you can add a description up here if you want to, something to remind you what the query does. I'm going to paste in the SQL. Now, if you're looking for how to find the SQL, we've done a series of blogs in the Academy that you can go and find. I'll add those links to the box below the video so you can get a little bit more clued up about how to build your own SQL. This SQL you can see on screen is purely to pull back all of the live situation events tables and we can filter that later on. So apply that and click OK. Next step is that we need to put it in some sort of graphical view so we can see the data. So I'm just going to change this view so that you can see it. I'll drop a table from the top, click once and then click in the box where you want the table to be. You'll get a little pop up that says assign query now. If you click yes it will take you straight into the properties of that window. You can get to this box by right clicking properties, same way. Then if you do click here to sign query, and then we need to go and find the query just built. So as I mentioned before, depending on which component you selected in the drop downs will depend where the SQL appears in this list. We picked Tivoli Enterprise Monitoring Server, so we drop down there, and then any custom SQL you build has its own little box section here called Custom SQL. If you drop that down again, you can see, there we go, the one we picked. So you can see the SQL again, make sure it's the one you need, click OK. So once you've applied the query, you'll see here, if you go down and click the bottom right hand of the box, you can click Test. If your data source exists and the query is correct and there's data there to pull back, you will see data in this top window. It's worth doing the test before you apply this to a view, especially if you're looking at doing global changes. So you may be pushing this view out to more users than just yourself, for instance, so you're not going to send out a bad workspace. If you click on the Filters tab, you can see here you've got the data source at the bottom, which is live data, that's real data from the Thames coming back, and you've got boxes above that you can put filters on. Now here you've got status, um, in this case, we're pulling back everything from the live events table. So this table will hold all situations that are started, stopped, acknowledged, closed, opened, and you can see what the status is here. This is quite a good view to build. Maybe if you just want to see all closed events or just all acknowledged or all open, you can filter it down very quickly, very easily. Use the data at the bottom to work out what filters you need at the top for your needs. Once you've tested the data and it's in the top and you can see it's working, if you click Apply and then OK, you can go into the table you've built here and see all the data returning back. So it's a very quick way for one, to build custom workspaces. Two, if you need to query the Thames for any reason, it saves you having to use command line if you're not comfortable with it. 
majority of customers and people I see using this are generally where they build logical views. So they've built their own custom workspaces, their own navigator trees, and they're building these views for specific uses. So you might have an engineering team, an investigation team, uh, maybe an operations team. Those workspaces are customized for their needs. These sort of queries with filters added makes their job a little bit quicker because you can filter out all of the information that's not relevant for that job role. So that was a very quick demonstration. As I said, there's some links below the video here if you need to learn more about how to obtain the SQL, what sort of SQLs out there already you can copy and use. I hope you found that useful. Be sure to click the thumbs up if you did. Thank you very much for watching this video at the C and SI Monitoring Academy. We've provided several links below so that you can find all our other blogs and videos in the series. Thank you very much.